Okay, 102, opening the meeting, accepting the, the adopting the agenda as it's um, been written with no changes. And I'm gonna read the script. <clears throat> this is Mickey Rowland, Chair of Historic Structures Advisory Board. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons that participated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, Lucy? Yes. Brooke? Yes. And so far, no one else. Oh, yeah, Angus is here. Angus is there. Angus. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Doing, present. You're, you're present, good, just in time. And no um, staff and no real anticipated speakers. So this open meeting of HSAM is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. For this meeting, HSAM is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted to the town's website that identifying how the public may join in. Participants may find information on the conduct of this meeting at that location. Please note this meeting is being recorded and each vote will be by roll call. Uh, okay. Um, so getting started on the first item. Julie, what, which one are you here for? I'm here for, um, am I, I'm here for 70 Orange Street. 70 Orange. Okay. And That's Steve, right. you're Sandy Drive. You're both at the top. So I'm just going to stick to the, um, I'm going to stick to the order. So okay. we'll do five Martins Lane first. And I'm going to share. I think this is it. <clears throat> okay, five Martins Lane. They're putting in a um, mini split system, <clears throat> which involves the location of. Um, the unit and also the, the, the lines coming down the building, which you can see in the picture here, they want to run them right there. Let's talk about the unit first, which is in the back, on the back of this porch. I don't think that's really going to be visible. Does anybody, is anybody concerned about the location of the unit? No. No, I appreciate their place, placement. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so this is the other concern. This is the side, and this is Martin's Lane over here. So it's clearly this is a parking area, it's going to be quite visible. Um, <clears throat> they didn't really talk about how they're going to conceal it, and my thinking was many split heap of condenser extension equipment. So they didn't they didn't really elaborate on this except for enclosure for line six. Um, I was looking at it just like this to me it was like why not just move it over to the corner board and box it in like a downspout. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Cedar. Or paint, it. paint it. Yeah like you'd expect like the other one they'll probably box this one in because they can see the hole they're going to need one. Oh right. So they'll have two. <clears throat> Does that, that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just saying there doesn't appear to be a box downspout on that corner board. Perhaps the line set could be boxed into mimic a boxed downspout. If not, it should be placed on the north face of the corner. Agreed. Good. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add? Moving on. I, I wish that propane tank wasn't visible from the street, but that's not on the agenda. No, where was that? It's like when you look at where the oil tank is, it's going to be removed. Oh, yeah, yeah. right there. Yeah. You could say, why don't you your fence in the propane tank? Or move it around the corner. Well, they probably don't want to move it. It's all regulated right there. Um, but we could suggest a fence. Do you want to just add that? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do work on a house and you got the guys there, yeah. make your place look better. They're working, they're doing work all right. Okay, 70 Orange Street. Um, okay, Julie, you want to talk about this? Sure. Um, I am here to present the possibility of building an outdoor shower, and it's going to be on the side of the house. Um, it will, by very high privet, um, 
on Orange Street. So it's not really going to be that visible unless you're peeking through the privet. Um, do you have any specific questions? It's gonna be shingled, so it'll sort of happily blend into the home. Yeah, um, I do, I just wanted to see if I can um, <clears throat> find it on Street View because I think I did see. It's the house right across from um, Sheila Fee's shop. Yes. That was just redone and it, um, I was just down there yesterday looking at this. Uh, I don't see a problem with it. Um, <clears throat> I will add, though, it would be nice if they're included in the application that there was a photograph of the front of the house. But I think if it's shingled and on the side and set back, um, I think it's fine. It's it will be, if you see the bottom right-hand window, it's going to be to the right of that window. Yeah. Right, right on the there. corner. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah. How, how let's see how tall will that be um, in terms it's of the 78 inches high so this is sort of to scale that it'll be um yes roughly here cutting through the middle of the window more or less yes. upper part of the window you know in terms of shingling the wall i think it's an odd thing to it's odd to have a shingled wall just hanging out there i think personally i'd rather just see a vertical board fence like it, you're we're used to seeing yeah Me yeah too. Yeah. A shingled wall is highly irregular for outdoor shower. I don't know of any actually. Um, I just thought it would look like a little barnacle. Yeah, unless there's a roof over it, which I don't think you want to get into, it it I would just do the vertical board fence. Yeah, so we're okay yeah. with the location. It'll be just barely visible, but I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, just with a corner post with caps on it. Yep. Yeah, Julie, you okay with changing that to vertical board? Um, yes. It's, you know, to be honest with you, it's not up to us. The HDC is gonna make this decision, but we're gonna make this recommendation. Okay. So, so you can talk to them about it. Perfect. So I think that's where we're gonna go. And anybody else have any comments about this? Well, I think it's a cute little house, um, which I love small houses and I think just to keep a you know a basic outdoor shower nothing fancy low key is the most appropriate thing to do yep yep and this will will feel like that you know I'll be with a vertical cord not shingles yeah um, so all right Thank thanks you. Julie yep. all right next Steve is up Glad you're here, Steve. I'm a little confused about this one. No problem. I wish it, I wish it could be as easy as the first two you just did. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. So let's talk about the demo first. Or is it, is it a move off? It's a demo or move off for now, yes. Okay, what did, yeah. you, what did you put on the application? Because it says move off on the... Um, yeah, you got both. Demo, move off. Move off. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, house, it's a house that was... Um, Built from an existing two-car garage in 1950. Yeah, I saw the pictures of that somewhere. Go away. Go away. Go away. Lower numbers. Lower numbers, Mickey. Okay. Be a photograph of it. Keep going up. Yeah. What is this? The neighbor. Oh. Or... Well, there's now this is number oh, 17. Here we go. This is, uh, is, it, is a garage. Yeah. Okay. Built to two by fours. Or joists. Uninsulated. Uh, studs are pulling apart at the roof. I am in some heating and cooling in it, but there's no insulation, so it's, it's not doing any good. Okay. So the owner, uh, it's in the, also it's in the wetlands, okay? So we worked with the CONCOM, we got a CONCOM approval, um, the house. They want it moved out of the wetland area. So uh, we, were, we were looking at moving it out and off into a demo. There were uh, five 
area that were moved that was similar to this over time. Uh, two that was just moved um, probably this year on the left-hand side that belonged to the left-hand side lot there. One in front of it was moved as well. So there have been four cottages in this whole area that were the same height and the same style that were moved to provide uh, new homes in this location. Scroll down on some of the photos, I can just walk you through some of this. So this is the existing front at Sandy. Yeah, so that's the paperwork on it. Now it's an elevation six or an elevation three. Steve, do you have a date? Why don't we build? Mickey, Mickey. Okay. So if we keep scrolling down. <laughs> what was the date? 250. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Mickey. <laughs> 1950, Angus. No. <laughs> Not that old, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, hey, I told you my mental health is going there, Mickey. Yeah. There's no filter anymore. Not, not enough. <clears throat> we keep so, scrolling down. There the photographs of the other ones that were in the area. Um, well, it was that. This is here. It was too sandy. That was moved. Uh, same cottage, basically, mirror, mirror image of each other. And that was moved in order to put the larger house on the corner in place. We keep scrolling down some more. That's too sandy. Two sandy then moved to five sandy. Then it was moved off of five sandy. Was there? So go ahead, keep going. Down. And it was moved okay. off uh, on January 2022 to 11 Hallward. So single story unheated sheds, uh, dwellings were, were moved off. So we're asking to do the same. The neighbor across the way. Let me um, let me just ask. Um, aside from the, I mean, does anybody have any concerns about this as a demo move off? Um, no, given the uh, history of the area and the number of cottages that have been moved off previously, um, and that it's two by four construction. Uh, so, I mean, it is a charming building. I hope it finds a home, um, but I don't know that it's. Um, necessarily special um so nope Mickey, we did we did offer the house to nantucket housing authority mm -hmm. uh, they said no thank you hmm. um to habitat for humanity they said no thank you and we went to ann cuspa and she said can't use it so we've made those three initial offers already thinking that somebody would take it but they they said it was not worth saving uh, and or transporting to redo it for what they need, what their needs are. Yeah. Okay. You think that maybe somebody could use one of the rooms, one of the wings as a little shed or outbuilding? The other issue we have is we're into the we're coming into the no move moratorium in town. Right. Well, when are you planning to move it or demo? I guess you're demoing it probably. We we're, we've offered to move it already ahead of schedule. Yeah. You know, we do have to legally advertise it. Uh, we are looking to hopefully start construction on the 1st of September or the second week of September. There may be a small window at, at the late August at the latest, but I mean, I don't. I don't. OK, so Steve, just so you know, you're you're breaking in and out every now and then. I'm not sure why, but um, we, I think we're, get, we're getting most of it. All right, so I'm gonna say there's there's <clears throat> not really any concerns except for the waste as usual. And given the history of the area as Brooke put it, it's acceptable. Okay, okay that, all right, so let's talk about the new one. The map you just had up on the, on the, on the screen, Mickey, if we can. 
So, yeah. Yeah. Please, right. please describe what's going on here. <clears throat> place to start. On the left was the location of the old house. Okay, you can see it's clearly in the 25 foot setback. Okay. Yep. The CONCOM wants us, to make, is making us move the footprint out of the 25 foot. Okay. And slide it back between the 25 and the 50. And you can see the, out, the outline of the existing house. Right. Yep. They will not allow us to deviate from the outline of the existing house. They're only allowing us to add full foot line. And they're only allowing us 700 square feet forward of that. So this is to do with the restoration area that we're that we've offered to provide. Mm -hmm. And that said, our arms are pretty much tied behind our back because we weren't able to, you know, generate uh, an in and out line along the rear that faces the, the back of the property. The static, static line. So with that in mind, if we can slide down. Uh, so, go down. yeah, Steve. What is, is, are you moving a building onto this site and then adding onto it? Uh, they're just moving the footprint. footprint is, the footprint is, is, is being moved in, in uh, its mass, but you know, they're, they're allowing us to demo the building, CONCOM is or move it, but we can't change the footprint that's there. So why does it say portion of this existing dwelling to be relocated on new pier foundation? You're not really relocating a building, are you? Or are you not relocating the building? We're just relocating the mass that they're allowing us to do so. Okay, so it's not you're tearing the building down, and that's just the the, the original footprint. That is correct. That is correct. That's our, our intention. Point. Okay, and you're just kind of shifting that footprint to show where it might have been had you moved it, but you're not going to. Correct. I get it. It's, it's the same. Correct. It's the same okay. footprint as over here. Okay. Yes. Yes. One hundred percent. Okay. All right. New. Well, actually, let's go down before we get here. I want to go over here to number nine. Number nine, all the way up, Mickey, to number. Sorry, right there, number six. Okay. So we drew our inspiration from you know uh, several homes of the shingle style, uh, <clears throat> so typical Nantucket style is back in the early 1900s, okay? So we all are familiar with Lane Stearns in Boston. We're all familiar with the lovely uh, cliff side that was demoed a long time ago. And we keep going down, the cliff in. So we're drawing inspiration from components of these buildings back of the, the, the era of the Nantucket summer home, okay? With that said, down to number 14, if we may, okay? These are all the homes in the area that we catalog this location that are similar in styles and height. We have to be Uh, first floor from the floodplain. Is it uh, too sandy? Is elevation 10.5? Area are actually taller than 30 feet, which is of course allowed under the zoning for the, the floodplain uh, information. You know, bust the floodplain height at that particular uh, rise in elevation. So we wanted to let you know, we've done our homework here. We've We've come up with all these heights to an extensive uh, amount of research to let you know that you know we're within the ball, the same ballpark that everybody else is in the neighborhood. Okay, see that twenty three Jefferson, sixty Hulbert. That, that's quite tall. Mm -hmm. uh, not uncommon with anything that's in the area. With that said, 
Let's go down if we may. Mickey, I'm sorry, keep going. Yeah, go ahead. So this is the view of uh, uh, locations on the back of Hull Red Avenue that you would see across from the white elephant, okay? Or the renovated house at eight and keep going down. A lot of that stuff is pretty, again, linear along the back side of there. So if we can scroll down some more, that's the that's too sandy there with its elevation of 10.6. Oh, and if we one other thing to point out here too is that they are like they maxed out on their like they totally maxed out on the ground cover there as well. So there's the elevation point at 10.6. You say the elevation, you mean the first floor elevation? Yes, Vicky. First floor elevation. Yep. Yeah. We're actually six inches lower than that, but it's relevant six inches really. Yeah. Which pretty much dictates where everything needs to be and what we could and could not do during the design. Okay. It's quite tricky to, to shoehorn all that stuff in based upon the separation requirements that we have. I can imagine. So there's the. Um, those are the elevations. Cottage as uh, much as possible. Much as that are similar to what's in the, in the style that's there. Uh, flood uh, flood valves, whatever you want to call them, flood gates to for the code on the bottom. Uh, air construction so as a skirt to. Um, Bring some horizontal elements in here rather than more vertical elements. Go down to the plan for a minute. Sorry, what was that? Yes, um, there's a plan that goes with it. I think Mickey too. Floor floor plan. Oh, plans. So you can see those there, and again, you can see that the first floor the first floor proposed rear is the same footprint that of the existing house that was there. So we had to place all our program into that existing container, so to speak, and then add the seven square feet out in front of that container for the, to meet the CONCOM's approval. Mm -hmm. To the very end, we had a 3D rendering done. Yeah, that's helpful. So those are the those are two views. This one here is off on the side, kind of the front side elevation. One on the, above that is the long one along the back. You had to, you know, being that we couldn't change the, the, the fixture or the, the plane of that elevation, we broke it up with some uh, roof gables that ran along there. And we, we did put in a, a porch, a covered porch on the second floor that was reminiscent of some of the old summer porches on there. Mm -hmm. Passing on the front and sides with, with porches that would enter the, the building, the main entry and side entry. And breaking up the massing by trying to lower it to the front of the building. And then in on the rear is that porch that we talked about there. And well, This is the key to elevation here. This is what we're mostly going to be looking at, right? Come down as you turn Hobbit one way, the one direction or the other, and come down Sandy Drive. Is what you're going to see. Yeah. The other elevations will be visible, but they're going to be visible all the way from you know the Eastern Street and the White Elephant, which is quite a long ways away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Steve. That's helpful to have you explaining things. Um, I. I'm just going to read my usual comments, and then I think I'm, everybody will have a lot to add, or maybe not. But um, so, <clears throat> what I've got is this design concept could be successful, but it's currently very massive and bulky. An upside down house with two second floor bedrooms may may be too much program. Some one story additive massing would bring down the perceived height and greatly benefit the general scale. Um, specific concerns are on the north, and that's this side. I'm going to go to the elevations. Um, okay. 
There's the north down at the bottom. Um, upper deck, uh, uh, upper deck dominates the small shed roof. This, that's referring to this spot here. It's it's a glimmer of a, of a shed roof, and then the deck kind of takes it over. Um, the curved overhang above the second floor door, which I'm fine with. I just think it needs to be pulled down tighter because it seems to float above it a little too much. And the horizontal skirt boards, I, I hear what you're saying about not, not adding more vertical elements because of the height, but horizontal skirt boards are just, you just don't see them anywhere, except maybe on a couple of new houses. I just don't think they're that, that traditional. I may be mistaken, but I, it's, I think it's more conventional to have either lattice panels or, um, or um, you know, vertical boards and maybe even identify or show some brick piers. Sounds like that's your construction type anyway, is on piers. Um, so over on the west, um, projecting deck tower, I'm not sure what else to call this thing right here. It's, you'll see it on the north here and on the west. It needs to be more integrated. It's kind of just got this base to it, shingled base, it feels a little awkward. And on the east, this gable is kind of narrow. Um, and on the south, um, second floor, you know, I know you're on a, you've got a linear issue with the concom, but you could possibly break up the second floor wall. I just think that this is, is a full two-story wall practically. It's, it's pretty flat and the windows are kind of monotonous along this line here. You know, they could be mixed up a little bit with different sizes, patterns, something different. But generally, Steve, I like the, the general concept. I think it's, it's nice, something refreshing, different. But I, I do think it needs a little bit of tuning, tweaking. Um, so who else wants to talk about this? Lucy, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that. I mean, I like the old shingle style, but I do have a few comments, though. I agree with Mickey about the vertical boards. I don't think that that <coughs> works successfully. Um, and then um, looking at the historic examples that you pulled up, um, I'm not sure a roof walk is appropriate for this style, nor a uh, white chimney. Um, especially with you're going to have cottage corners and um what's the roofing material a roof lucy three tab i mean a uh, uh, architectural series i'd rather see wood but that's shape but um and i agree with the other comments that mickey has made okay um um, I have really nothing to add. I appreciate the effort, definitely. Um, and uh, um, it's nice to nice to see someone try to make something that looks like it should go there. So thank you. <laughs> um, and then the other uh, stuff is just the details that Mickey had um, mentioned. I per personally would prefer to see peers. Um, or, you know, just at least expose some kind of peer with either board and fill or, uh, you know, whatever else you want to do there. But, um, but uh, I don't really have anything to add. Okay. Thank you, Brooke. Angus? Um, I appreciate the effort as well. I, it, at first, I guess still does, the, the scale um, seems really huge to be right next to another house in an area that was pretty much one story houses on the ground. So to go up what feels like three and a half stories is just, it feels, it feels really big. Um, there, there isn't a lot of stepping down and I understand the constraints of the footprint, um, but you know, that's, I mean, that's just what it is. Um, but um, as far as the, um, you know, the on a more cellular level, 
um, th there, there are details that I feel like are sort of picked and chosen, but there isn't a pure example of any of the inspirational um, uh, pieces of architecture. So I, uh, I, I feel like, you know, the, uh, the, the porches and the curves, um, you know, the curves would have been shingled posts uh, rather than painted white posts um the stairs uh would would primarily be uh internal the balconies you know existed in in those examples but there there really weren't all these you know stairs uh outside um the, there's a a funny detail that, that you know with a sort of return of the the gutters along the eave back into the um, into the uh, gables. It, it's weird, but uh, it showed up first uh, in the, the model, which I think is helpful for um, for visualizing this. But it's like there's a double there's a double detail going on. Um, I'm looking at the yeah there and the bay window over to the right. Um, you know, up at the top, it's a it's an awkward detail, and then to the left of that, there, yeah, it's it's like um, it's like one detail, and then another, and then another Eve added on top of it. Um, so uh, when it got down, you know, when it gets down to sort of ironing out the details, those things I think would you have to decide one or the other. Um, the 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 examples that you've drawn inspiration from too don't really have um you know continuous strings of windows I, there was one elevation it might be the the picture above this one um where there's just yeah a whole string of windows and uh -huh. so i think that some would need to be eliminated and others you know you could you could mull and then have a section of windows but that feels like you know just, it's almost like a, 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 a deck, uh, you know, or a porch that's been filled in. And um, I agree with the, the massing on this side that there should be some sort of push and pull. Um, mm -hmm. But it, uh, in general, I, I appreciate there being an attempt to do something other than, you know, a shingled box. Um, so I, I encourage you to stick with it, but just, you know, sort of look back at your inspirations and, and follow a little bit truer to them. So uh, I, you're laughing at your comment and I wasn't laughing at your comment. I was laughing if we go back uh, because of one of the earlier iterations of my things I had shingle columns <laughs> was the why reason I was laughing. Uh, if we go back up, Mickey, to number four, the photograph, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, up here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see the return on the uh, on the the rake and the fascia. That was the look that I was looking at. And you see how the windows are grouped together on the lower parts. And so this was kind of a uh, kind of the inspiration that I drew from. Um, I think you're, that particular detail. It feels like you're pretty close, Steve, but I think you need to, to look at it a little more carefully. I, I, I agree with Angus that what you're showing feels a little awkward. And this, it's hard to see in this detail. Um, this might be your pretty standard kind of large, you know, return, yeah. um, rake return. It's just hard to see it that closely. Just a return, you know, on that rather than just cut the corners like that, to have a return on, on those two um, the shingles. I think the return is a, is, a, is a look into itself and it's good, but it's like there's a, there's a, a regular sort of projected um, soffit and, and rake overhang of like a one roof, but then um, there's, there's a soffit. Spot, it's, right. it's in the wrong spot. It needs to be come up, come up or come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I got it. And Sorry. that porch with this, the string of windows that was in the inspiration. Yeah. That, that was a, a porch that's, you know, it's a sun porch 
versus uh, this that is more like, um, you know, a continuous like second floor, different rooms uh, yeah, with, with collections of windows and a string that that isn't the consistent thing that you see in this picture that's on the screen now, but um, but this that is just a mix of spaces and and long line of windows. Yeah, I think I think you know two things here. If you could somehow separate this these gables, maybe push this surface in, would identify these gables nicely, and also it might give you a different pattern for these windows, so they don't. It's not this one long band of them. Um, I, I, I think that's a good. I think that's a good suggestion. Pushing in at that little flat area. But also, that's always a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. It, it's just that in uh, the the order of of buildings, where there's a corner like that larger gable to the left, I mean to the right um, on the left side where it comes down to the eave, you know there would be the window would be over enough that there would actually be a corner post holding that gable up. Right. Support. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. I think your comments are, you know, are, are very helpful today, everybody. And I think, you know, some pushing, some pulling, some window, window rearranging, some uh, just another look at maybe kind of simplifying some of these trim elements, mm -hmm. changing the skirt to uh, maybe a vertical skirt with some pier uh, poking through. Um, I, think it, I think it's a good start. I agree. I think it's great. It's nice and refreshing change to see something like this. Um, just, you know, just some, some tweaks and love to see it somehow. <clears throat> I know you've got, I'm sure you're playing off lock, but um, it just feels like a lot on the second floor, just too much. And typical of, of this older style where, where these other elements are brought into it, um, yeah, almost all of these were a dark, dark color, dark green or dark gray or burgundy or, you know, something other than white. So it's, Again, there's a there's a, a like a conflict of 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 architectural style. Yeah. Right. That was probably dark. Mm -hmm. It was pretty dark. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else to add from anybody? I'm going to add a couple more things to my notes, like the. Um, Shingle posts, I thought that was good. Internal stairs, if possible, white chimneys. What, how does everybody feel about the roof walk? Lucy mentioned that as a, as a potential issue. I'm not- I don't have a strong feeling about it. I don't personally either. I, it's not, you know, sometimes it's just not necessary to have a roof walk and it seems like superfluous, but it didn't bother me on this building. I think there's a lot of roof and I, help think, I think it helps break it up. Yeah. I'd go with that. Um, I mean, there's going to be an amazing view from the first floor, let alone the second or third. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't find the elevator. No one goes up on those roof walks after the first few months anyway. I know. It's true. You need the crow's nest. A 14, Mickey, please. Oh, picture 14. I, yeah. think there, I think there's a lot of them in the area. Yeah, there's a lot of roof walks. Now, yeah. I was looking at that historic samples that you used. There's a handful, yep. Okay, yeah, guys. They're everywhere. So, um, all right. So I'm sure we'll be seeing you again on this one, Steve. I, at least I hope so. But um, see what the uh, what the other team has to say. Exactly. <laughs> they I they want. So, but thank yeah. you for your time. All right. Thank you. We'll all see right. you. Bye. All right. <clears throat> we have next 31 Western, this shed. Anybody care? No. No. Looks nice. It's yeah. great. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now we're on Holb uh, to Easton, 42 East Street. Um, this is the breakers. I, I'm not clear as to anybody really understand what's going on here. Well, they're putting fencing in front of um, those nasty AC units that are so visible from the street which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then it looks, I wasn't quite sure what, what the gate, I, I didn't understand how that was working. 
but um, having a formal gate that closes, I'm trying to pull it up right now on my iPad, but um, as I recall on the application, it was a white gate, but I think having these gates that cut off driveways um, is inappropriate for that area. It's much too formal. I mean, this is something we're starting to see a lot of. Um, yeah, and then if this and if this is an um, an application for exterior stuff, I did have a question about outdoor lighting. Right. So it does look like there. I couldn't really tell. I thought it was just cobblestone, but I think you're right. I think it is to to provide new fencing. Um, I guess the question is, where is it? <coughs> Right there on Easton Street. Yeah. Okay. I agree, Along I agree with Lucy about this. I, I, I don't think there are any gates down that way. Not um, yet. I'm sure we're going to see. The it. example that they gave was on Orange Street. So this is it now, I guess. <clears throat> yes. They, they are changing. What is the surface? No, this is all brick right now. Right. Yeah. And they want to change it to cobblestone. Anybody have a concern with that? Uh, it says Belgian block. Yeah, but the application, this is part of the confusion. Um, change brick to cobble. And maybe, or they couldn't be confusing Belgian block with cobble, could they? Well, maybe they are. Existing drive is brick and cobble trim, and that's actually Belgian block trim. So we'd like to switch to all cobble. They're, they're, they mean Belgian block when they say cobble. Yeah. Well, the application is by uh, Sconset Gardner. So. Yeah, you think they would know better. Yeah, um, they would think Marty would know. Well, he might know better too. And he might know that saying the word, but saying something else. I mean, it says Belgian block on the plan. So someone knows the difference. Yeah. Um, this is 42 East. So here is the cobble trim, right? Looks like Belgian block to me. Yep. So I'm going to assume they're, they're, that they're now trying to go all Belgian block on the interior. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it says it. Does it? Yes. On the plan. If you it scroll does. down. No, uh, you're right. Yep. Keep one more. Uh nope, maybe. PT1 is Belgian block pavers. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And they're linear gridding it. <clears throat> okay, so now it's different. What, how do we feel about turning that all into Belgian block? No. Yeah, I kind of think so too. It's a lot of, it's a lot of any material. It's just, it's opaque. Even the amount of brick that's there is just a little much. Yeah, we want to ask. I'm sorry, when there's that much space, I feel like that's when shell should be employed. It's, it's more than a, a drive or a turnaround. It just seems like a lot of any material. It, it looks like a lot of brick and it's, it would certainly be a lot of Belgian block, which seems really formal. But the only problem is down there is that the people who have shell on their driveways, when they get the flooding, so much of it ends up out in the street. It's, mm. I mean, it's a yeah. piles of it. Yep. Well, even if they could somehow find a mix between um, the brick and the, and the Belgian block, it just feels like a lot. Or cobblestone, actual cobblestone. No, that's hard to walk on when you get a... <laughs> That's for sure. Um, Somehow it doesn't look as monolithic, though. Yeah. 
I think for the moment, all we can say is too much of any material, especially Belgian block. We'd like to see other examples of mix, a mix of materials. How's that sound? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, I'd rather see it stay brick, honestly, than, than what they're proposing. Yeah. Okay, and so the sliding gate. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, that. It's right here. And it looks like here's a, down at the bottom has gate design, Mickey. And it looks pretty formal. Yeah. Um, and. It does, it says, I guess it would be natural to, natural to weather, but still, I just don't think that it's appropriate down there. Um, but I do really do appreciate the um, fencing in of those nasty AC units that are, they're about, I think they're, as I recall, around five or six of them over on the left-hand side. Yeah, they're like, we're yeah, I brought up, a, 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 I use this. I see, yeah, it says right there. It's a yeah. fence wrap, yep. It, um, everyone may recall when I um, showed photographs of bad <laughs> examples. Yes. This, this was one of them. I remember that, yep. And it, behind a hedge, which drops his leaves in the winter, you can see right yeah. there. So this is odd. I mean, they're, they're actually proposing to slide the gate to the side and let it sort of hang out there in space. That would be kind of visible, wouldn't it? So. Yeah, I mean, it's having a sliding gate versus one that had two, you know, two doors opening. Yeah. If, if any, that would be more appropriate. But I don't think you could really do that on the incline going into this driveway. So that's probably why they're opting for the sliding. But either the way I think there's a bad idea. Yeah. I think the only way that you get a sliding gate to work is when it can slide behind the same material and right. disappear, but for it to just be free floating seems crazy. I totally agree with that. Even if they think they're going to hide it behind some privet, it's hard to tell if they are not, but it's not going to work. No, I'm going to see it all winter long. And so I, a swinging gate or or no gate? Yeah, I, I think the the objection is the gate. Period. Yeah. Um, Angus said they can't do a swinging gate. In. Gates technically, I believe, are always supposed to swing in, and with the incline there, I, it wouldn't work. It, it, could move up a, it could move up a hinge as it as it opens. You know, just oh. kind of rotates upwards. But, yeah, but we we don't want it anyway. No, no. Um, okay. Anything else? Just the the gate, the fence. We don't the gate. We don't like the fence. Is okay over there, of course. No, we appreciate that. Yeah. And the um, cobble is just too much. Okay. One okay. thing. I, one thing I would like to point out on this application, though, that they say uh, fencing natural to weather which is what you want around those AC units. But in their illustration of the, the gate going into the property, it's, it looks like it's a painted gate. Totally. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to object to it, painted or unpainted. And can you ask about outdoor lighting, please? Outdoor. Mm. Yeah, I could see them throwing some lights on that gate. Oh, yeah. Nice big number. How about a lighted neon number? It flashes. <laughs> okay, I think we're done with that one. For the go-go dancer? <laughs> oh, Brooke, you're going to miss us. Definitely done with that one. The directional lights that sort of go out to each side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see, where are we? 113 where? Main. <clears throat> So this, um, Lucy, you sent some pictures, which was, that was helpful. Let me, uh, let me pull those up. 
Share screen. There we go. So here's that quarter existing. And then there's the actual steps. They're proposing to move these well, just a little bit over to the left, I guess. And the gate, there's a gate right here in front of it, rearranging that a little bit. So here's, I guess they're just going to screen off. This is too visible for them to be seen from Main Street. Um, so we saw what it looks like. Um, and here's what they're proposing brick. And just moving the gate to the side, little brick stoop, I guess, the sort of steps up and into the side yard through this little opening. And then they're gonna change the fence. They're, I guess they're keeping, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up because you can see pretty well the fence. So here's the fence and you can see that gated area. So they're going to just move this gate over to the corner. Now, the, the thing that concerns me a little bit is just this side here, because you can see where this, they want to bring this higher fence down, I think to within about eight feet of the sidewalk, which to me is probably roughly in this area here. Um, I don't know why, because they've got this big holly or evergreen of some sort. I think that'd be enough screening and privacy. So do we really want to see more of this tall fence coming down this close? No. Yeah. I didn't think so either. So it says extended natural to weather solid board fence, plus or minus 21 and a half feet section. That's a lot for privacy. Um, and then eight foot long fence section be lowered to three feet for neighbors vehicular access was really natural to weather. So this will still be natural to weather, <clears throat> pick it, I guess, and then painted across the front. Uh, so um, I, I, I said generally, okay, but would rather not have the tall fence extended closer to Main Street. Okay, yeah. Yep. Anything yep. more? Okay. And then they obviously own the people, the property behind them on Howard Street. <clears throat> oh wait, Mickey, I want to add outdoor lighting to that too. Are they proposing any outdoor lighting? And the one thing I keep forgetting to to, to add is we want to see these again. Not necessarily this one, but um, the others we do. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, Howard Street. This is, this all, this all looked fine to me. I didn't have any concerns with this one. Did anybody care about this? Well, my only concern is when I took a, a took a picture was when we, this came up beforehand, we said something about the um, meter box right <clears throat> smack to the right of the door there. Did you send me a picture of that one too? Yeah, I did. And it's, it's still there. And it looks like a new box. Oh, this is on the side at least. Yeah. It's right on the side. See, it's right there next to Yeah, the it definitely looks new. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, geez, come on, folks. Well, we can ask them to box that in. And I'd add outdoor lighting on this, too, while we're at it. Yeah, OK. Um, the other. Funny thing about this this one <clears throat> is um, so here's 
the picture of the um, just you you familiar with this thing that's going on here? This is like a curved Belgian block curb. You familiar with that? You have to. I know because I was at the homestead a lot <clears throat> when they put this in, and this is a funny little curved section, which they're showing to be. Well, they're sh they're not a, they're not showing it that way. They're showing it as a straight line, but they're not. They haven't um, identified it as a change. I'm happy to get rid of the curve, and I hope they do straighten it out. But they just didn't mention it. <clears throat> yeah, well, I think they have to just to get that walkway. They do, but that's not a fence, is it? That's just a property line. I hope. Yeah. All right. So when Howard um, curved curb, and I don't know if they're planning on doing it or not. They just drew them. Just didn't draw it properly, but I'll I'll mention it. Hopefully they'll get rid of it because it's pretty odd. Where are the AC units? Yeah. It's not that rectangle right next to the door inside that gate, dude. It's not that, is it? I don't know. That's a good question. It almost looks like that would house one nicely. Pretty close to the street, if that's what they are. Yep, looks like it. That looks like. Is that a stoop? Is this the stoop. I this think is that's the, a, that's the stoop. Yeah, that's the stoop. Well, let's look at your photograph. That might tell us something. They got something sticking out of the wall. There's a, you can't tell. <clears throat> you can't tell. Foundation bin. <clears throat> Uh, window. I put it right out front of the window. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll ask where the AC then things are going. Yeah, it's, it's there. Okay, anything else on this? Nope. Oh. Okay, Howard Street. I wish Chris was here. Or, um, is, is somebody here representing this one? Ray's Court? Yes. I'm seeing a Patrick Quigley's. Is, is there a. Um, Patrick, are you on for something in particular? Okay. <clears throat> Guess not. Um, all right. Ray's Court. This is a. I guess there's. Uh, it wasn't real clear. There's two applications here. <clears throat> I'm kind of, um, one's identified as garage studio demo, I guess that's <clears throat> clear enough. And the other is addition historical right now. And they all seem to contain the same materials. Um, so this is the per Pose. You can see the existing outline of this thing. Um, so <clears throat> there's some existing villa drawings somewhere down here. And this is the house, so it doesn't show the. Maybe I didn't put the. <clears throat> addition. I'm sorry. I, um, Just trying to find existing drawings or even pictures of the garage. Both uh, the links that I pulled down from the town website were the identical. That's and what so I thought. So there, um, so there is no <clears throat> demo. And I don't think I can street view Ray's court. Um, Lucy, did you take pictures of that one? You did. 
Yeah, I think I sent you a picture of the back fence this morning. And then yesterday I sent you some. All right, let me see if I can pull those up. Cause I, if we're gonna talk about a garage demo, I think we should look at the garage. There just wasn't a lot of information on the garage. <clears throat> so did the applications look any different? I thought, no, I, they, they're not, they were exact. These, so maybe we just got two of the one and just didn't get the other ones. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, Lucy sent. Um, they both say addition on yeah. the links. Foray's court. Correct pictures. Okay, so I'll stop sharing. Let's start sharing this one. Right here. Okay. <clears throat> there's the house and there's the garage. Probably not that old. Um, the wall. Here's from the back. So this is taken, this is the fence on Judith Chase Lane, Lucy's here. Yes, yes. And the fence is in great disrepair. Mm -hmm. How tall is that fence? Um, Looks like you're five and a half, six feet. Yeah, you're reaching up over it. <clears throat> but it's visible. It's pretty clearly visible from Judith Chase. Um, <clears throat> all right. So anybody concerned about the demo of that garage? Um, walking by it on a somewhat regular basis, I would say no. It, it doesn't. I, I would certainly it. like some information yes, for well, answering that. <laughs> yes, definitely some drawings that are, you know, a unique application. I mean, the on the application for, you know, that's shown up twice for the addition, I'm seeing the date of 1797. You know, presumably the the garage is is later, but when I don't know. Yeah, somewhere I read. I, I looked up Clay Lancaster myself, who identifies this as H Ray's Court. Um, they talked about a series of like major changes. The house used to face to the west, I think, or maybe east. Um, I think they had to rotate it when the uh, when the um, Quaker meeting house put the concrete structure on that that could be you're right um this is the date on this one is 49 here's probably that garage <clears throat> and here it is in 23 and not here in 09 so that that garage that's there now has um like a funky negative uh, space um, into the into uh, where the the um, garage doors are to allow you to to walk up uh, from the street uh, mm -hmm. without seeing the door. Um, it's definitely like whatever is shown on Sandborn. That's definitely not what's there now. Oh, huh. so that's already been changed or redone. Yeah, I I, I think that they're they're like. I was in there uh, once um, a little while ago, and I I remember seeing uh, Boston sash windows and like cheap pine floors. Yeah. Um, was was this Linda Loring's house? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so. All right, so not a big concern about the garage, but we would like to see the information. Yeah. And maybe maybe they submitted it and we just got the same, the same application twice by mistake. <clears throat> so let's talk about the house. Um, at first glance, I thought this was, you know, not a, not a, oh, here's the garage. Um, not, 
not a lot of concerns. <clears throat> I mean, this to me, this this elevation looks actually pretty good, almost just fine. With maybe the exception of the roof walk, which I think we would normally want to see precedent for a roof walk. Um, it's then when you get to the back of the house, which is, as Lucy's shown, really visible. So, <clears throat> no, Mickey, wait, it, it's, the fence is in disrepair and um, it's slightly visible. Um, it could be extremely visible, right in your face. Yeah, I mean, even if they fix the fence, they're not gonna get a taller one. Um, they'd have to really plant out the backyard a lot and they could, but still for the moment, it looks like from where you were standing, were you standing on the sidewalk? I was standing in the street. I don't, I don't, there's no sidewalk up right there. On that side, okay. you're probably right, yeah. So um, yeah, it's visible, very visible. <clears throat> so I do want to, all right, well, let me, I'll, I, I'll say what I have and then you can um, add to it. Okay, the width of the addition, this is the part that really bothers me is this massive, wide asymmetrical peak at the main ridge of the addition. So if the, the width of the addition to the south is unusually wide for a rear L and the new ridge should drop below the line of the existing ridge and it should be a symmetrical gable. If the existing rear winder stair shed, this is where it gets hard, it's hard for me to describe what I was trying to get at here, but um, I'm trying to say narrow this down and when you look at the existing, this little bump out here contains a winder stair, which they're keeping, which is nice. And the floor plans. <clears throat> In this, oddly, this existing porch, funny porch is at this weird angle. And you can see the winder stair mimics that. It's on that angle. And up on the second floor, they're retaining it to get into their master closet from the kitchen. But this is staying. So they want to keep that. That's, that's all fine. But they're adding a lot around it, it seems, to maintain that stairway. Whereas what I'm thinking is they don't really need to, to add this space. I, I would like to see them. This gable goes from here to here. If they would curtail it right around where the exist already the addition probably about four or five feet in, right about there, and that would be <clears throat> right about here, <clears throat> and that would make this rear gable symmetrical. It would hopefully lower the ridge. Then maybe they could somehow lower the plate to lower the ridge. All this is new back here. All the bubbling is new. Um, so to keep this funky little thing, which is interesting, there's the side view of that right here. So here's the side view of that. This is the winder stair in here somewhere. Um, and then just add your addition beyond that. So that's, I'm, I'm probably not explaining it terribly well. Um, so uh, if the existing rear winder stair shed dormer remained intact and the new gable addition started at this edge, then it would become four or five feet narrower. This would improve the proportions of the rear addition and drop the ridge a couple of feet below the main ridge. The shed roof on the back of the garage, okay, now let's look at the west side, which is here. This is new this new garage. The shed roof on the back of the garage sits too high up on the rear roof slope, creating an awkward broken back. Perhaps the rear shed could be a cross gable. I have mixed feelings about that. So just rotate the ridge on the back, um, turn the ridge. This could become a cr uh, cross gable. This would improve the connection to the exterior fireplace, which is sitting against a low eave line, which is weird. <clears throat> this whole thing is weird. 
Um, if the exterior fireplace is visible, which it now pretty clearly is from Judith Chase Lane, then it's not appropriate. Um, change in the west elevation, 12 over 12 window. Okay, right here. They're pulling out this 12 over 12 window and moving it a smidge to the right and making it a nine over nine. They're also taking this one out, or no, they're taking this one out and, and moving maybe one of, maybe this window to that location. They're, re they're restore, uh, repurposing a lot of old windows, which is nice. Um, but to me, this seemed, it's a bathroom. They could rearrange the bathroom and keep the existing windows. So I said, changing the west elevation 12 over 12 to a nine over nine is not needed and unnecessarily disturbs existing fabric. The 12 over 12 should remain. Um, and then regarding the roof walk, I just said the typically the HTC requires evidence of a pre-existing roof walk before approving a new one on the house of the house of this age. So, you know, the, to me, this is a little awkward looking here also. Um, but that's all I've got written down. So what do you all have to say? Well, Angus? You're muted. The first um, elevation that we look at is, is, you know, the front facing um, raised court on the north elevation. And um, as is, more typical than not, there's a, a clear delineation separation of, of um, you know, this Nantucket style house and garage. Um, so my first concern is, is the, the, the coupling of the two. And the other is, is uh, it's reminding me of an application we keep seeing on Main Street, I think that, um, that the addition is aligning in first and second floor and eve uh, with with the primary mass so that addition to the right uh, on the west side is a concern i would much rather see that be one story uh, or at least the the eve drop and it be story and a half or something um, i know the perspective with it being set back changes that a little bit but it's still um, it, it's a concern that it's the same scale. It feels high. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, I just, you know, I'd rather not see the garage become part of the house. Um, but then, um, then as I uh, look around, I mean, it is kind of an awkward, long shed roof to the, for that addition in the back. Um, but when you look at the south elevation, um, you still have a significant portion of the, the, the south roof plane undisturbed. And um, I feel like that really changes when this gable addition goes on the back. It, it feels that it's, um, that it is, it's, it's pretty much the same scale of the main mass of the house uh, in width and height. Um, so I would, I would much rather see a lower eave line um, and not the gable coming off the back or or a story and a half gable coming off the back but not you know two and two two full stories with a third story you know window up there um, I, I want to talk more about that point I'm sorry to interrupt you yeah but, um, I I want to say the that's probably not that unusual to see a, a rear L of the same height as the main, same plate, I should say, not hmm. height. Is that, is, is that an incorrect statement? I'm just, you know, thinking, especially in, a, in de, right downtown, generally large houses. Brooke? Um, so it, it's not right downtown, but um, up on Prospect uh, or North Mill, uh, I had a very similar situation and um, the secondary mass, we dropped the eave. So instead of like six over six, I had 
uh, three over six, or you know, I, I had to change the window um, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that it, it probably just does depend on the scale. I think what may affect how we look at this is first of all how far back this addition is um from the front face uh if you go to the final page the proposed west elevation um you know that that addition you know that part of that l is really far back um relative to the front of the building so you know even though the eve lines read the same height you know from the uh, two-dimensional drawings i don't think you're going to really ever see them uh like you would if that uh addition was you know three or four feet from the front front of the building right so well i i think those are all good points brooke this is pretty far back it really is um almost too far back because it's so so segregated but that's a different issue well, at least they're not destroying too much original fabric. So that's true. Yeah. Gotta exactly. that. <laughs> yeah. That, so, I mean, once I started looking more globally at the whole thing, I appreciate that the, the facade is relatively undisturbed, but, but pretty much every other face is moving windows and walls. And I'm, I'm concerned about a 1790, house having a, a, a number of uh, openings where there weren't any and filling in where there where there were openings and the changing of fenestration. Um, my concern in looking at the window schedule is uh, there are a lot of windows that um, you know that, that are moving but there are also windows that are are I forgot what it says uh, it's it it says uh, salvaged and reused, but is that mean on the next job, or are they being restored and you know staying in place? Um, so my concern is about structure and 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 vista and scale here. I I just feel like it's a it's a it's a very large addition to in proportion to the, the existing structure. I, I totally agree with that, that it is a huge addition. It's a lot of a lot of stuff on the back of this house. I wanna get back to that question I said earlier about the plate heights on rear L's in town on, on good sized houses. You guys have, probably have seen more of this, Lucy and Brooke certainly who live there. Is this unusual? I guess that's my question. Is it really Actually, unusual? It, it is somewhat there, it's somewhat common when it's um actually in the same plane. So the L will be on, on one gable end or the other. And so what you get is the gable and then and then a continuation of an Eve line from the bottom of that gable. Mm -hmm. Um but but usually the gable is shorter. Um and how about, how about an L? How about a rear? you know, perpendicular L. I want to say there, it's not an unusual situation. No, I, I you're right. I, I, I think that um, the Eve, you know, will, will tie in with the other Eve height. Um, but the, but the, the ridge generally is. Oh yeah. Rock. yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's always a narrower gable. Absolutely. Than oh, the main, than the main. Yep. Yeah. yeah, here's the um definitely the rear L. Here's the yet. here's the original gable, which is you know not that wide. I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, I guess it's oh, what's going on. What is going on there? Yeah, what is going on there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is going on there? That's a question mark. I don't know. But like in this elevation, see there, there's there was one window in between those two windows, and mm -hmm. now that's yep. gone, and there are two windows where there weren't windows. So 
I, I just, I feel like there, there's a way to get the program in here and more sensitively, uh, you know, deal with the existing infrastructure. Yeah, I, I do agree. Yeah, and this is where I noticed that this plate has dropped down. At first, I didn't even see the asymmetry in the back, but it's clearly a salt boxy look to it. Um, all right, so aside from what I'm saying, so what I've said, I'm hearing. Um, uh, one last thing is that the outdoor fireplace on on this in this location just doesn't seem appropriate. Yeah, agree. I mean, I think we're, we're all agreeing there. This is highly visible here. Totally. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. Fireplace. The same with the second floor balcony. Um, yeah, that's a that's a hard one to swallow on this house. You know, that to me that didn't bother me. I think is it on a porch roof? I just you know I, I'm. I'm a little, personally, I guess, I'm a little leaning on the back of houses. There's a lot of funky stuff going on on the back of many Nantucket houses. And that, to me, was a pretty small scale thing. Just didn't bother me enough to make an issue out of it. Yeah, I think one went through on 28 India. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if it were a shingle rail and those looked more like windows in the back, it'd be easier to deal with, but, but, a second floor balcony on this this style and age house just doesn't seem appropriate, especially when it's visible. I mean, that's that's always been mm -hmm. one of the guidelines: is no French yeah. doors and balconies, uh, you, you know, within view. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they are showing a kick panel door. Same with down here. Um. Um, um, do you want me to mention that? I'll, I will if everybody wants me to, to. Well, I think it's worth discussion for HTC. So I'll, yeah, I'll put it in there. Our porch, our deck. <clears throat> Very visible. Okay, I mean, so this got... is like the tale of two houses, really. I mean, I feel like what we're looking here on the north side is just a totally different story than what we're seeing, I mean, north from south. Yeah. This is more contemporary balcony, outdoor fireplace, sort mm -hmm. of modern shapes and sizes and stuff. And then, and then you have your typical Nantucket house on the front. Yeah. Um, Brooke, did you want, do you have anything else? Do you want to add to that? No. Lucy? No, I agree with it about the outdoor um, fireplace. Yeah. So I think look at us on Ray's court. I'll just read this quickly, just get some context. <clears throat> Built in 1748 for John Ray, Northeast section, which is the original, which is Northeast section, original lean to half house facing east. So it faced the, the uh, library, facing east, yeah. Altered and extensive additions, south side and west end, roof completely changed by fourth quarter 19th century. Two and a half story shingle ridge and end chimneys, which we don't have, it's a central chimney now, I think. Further changes around 1900, including porch on east end, bay window and tall west extensions so it's been through a lot but but they kind of finished most of that work around 1900 i have to say this funny big shed thing on the back was got to be after 1900 so seen more than that um okay anything else on this one well that addition on the back with a huge windows or sun porch or whatever it is. I'd be curious if that was HDC approved. This thing? Yeah. Well, who knows when it was built? Where's the pictures? Oh, that? Yeah. That, that's been around forever. 
Okay. Yeah. Just, just, I, I, I walked through this building, um, I, like I said, a couple of years ago, and um, that that back edition is it probably was put up in the seventies. I mean, it's really it's pretty Thank sad you. and tired in there. Mickey, do you see Mary is? I think she's trying oh. to say. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mickey. Um, hi, everybody. On the history for the that you're reading out of Lancaster, is there? I don't have the book with me. But is there an annotation for a note for like a 2A or something like that? Because I, I, this house was built for George Ray, not John Ray. I know that the numbers have changed on the street, but I'm not sure it's eight. Well, that did confuse me. I'm glad you're bringing yeah. it up because that may because be- Lancaster said, house. if I remember, Lancaster said that he thought this house was like early 1800s. And I think he got thrown by some of the detailing around the door. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mary, right. because it does say 2A, built okay. second, second quarter, 19th century, one and three quarter shingle, ridge chimney, yeah. three bay facade, six over six paned windows, additions west and, and rear. So that definitely fits this building more than what Yeah, he just, he got the, you know, I've been talking with Brian on this one and, you know, we're, we feel pretty good about that 1797 date. Um, <laughs> Brian Pfeiffer. So I think that maybe, but I could see why Lancaster came to that decision if he just looked at the outside of the building. Well, yeah, if you go up to photo 45, Mickey, if you, if you go inside the house right there where you see where that shingle, that swath of shingles is different. Right here, yeah. Yeah, there. that is all later. And yeah. you can see the floorboards are completely different. And and the foundation, and yeah. I don't even remember. Uh, I think some of it might even be like um, not. I don't know if it's CMU or just like a a more modern uh, foundation to that side. You know, um, again, it's been a while since I've been in there, but it, it's definitely later. Chris, Chris Dallas has joined us. Chris, do you want to do you want to come into the conversation? Or if you're there, maybe he's not there. So, all right, I'd love to get him involved. Um, well, we're just wrapping this one up. Is there any anything more to add to this? Chris? Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to unmute shit. I, we hear you now. You do? Okay. Don't, don't see you, but we hear you. All right. Sorry, I just got uh, word of uh, you guys being on um, with this review. What? How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> We're, um... uh, there, there is. I heard um, uh, discussion about uh, this house was added on. Um, we've determined that it was probably around the Greek revival era, I think like 1830, 1850, that that whole section on the right-hand side or the west side was added. Um, mm -hmm. So that's not part of the original house. Uh, that is correct. Yeah, that that was that was clear. Mary, Mary helped identify the, the exact actual description. So we're, Chris, we're just kind of wrapping up, but I'll, I'll recap what we've talked about and um, you know, most of the concerns are with the uh, the the rear uh, <clears throat> southern wing right here. Are you seeing the screen, Chris? No, I'm not. I uh, I'm seeing you guys, but uh, I'm having trouble. I need. Let me just. Uh... Well, you know it pretty well. You may not have to see it. Um. So. I'm going to read what I've got is our, is our notes for the moment. <clears throat> the width of the addition to the south is unusually unusually wide for a rear L, and the new ridge should drop below the line of the existing ridge, and it should be a symmetrical gable. If the existing rear winder stair shed dormer remained intact, and I'm referring to that funny little um, you might know what I'm talking about, where the winder stair is, that funny rear two-story shed. 
if that remained there and the and the new addition started to the left of that, it would make um, the new gable about four or five feet narrower, and this this would improve the proportions of the rear addition and drop the ridge a couple feet below the main ridge. The shed roof on the back of the garage sits too high up on the rear roof slope, creating an awkward broken back. Perhaps the rear section could be a cross gable. This and also doing that would improve the, the connection to the, ex, to the proposed exterior fireplace. However, if the fireplace is visible, I and mean, we're pretty sure, certain this is quite visible from Judith Chase, that an exterior fireplace is not appropriate. Um, now, specifically, so a couple of concerns about windows. Um, the 12 over 12 window on the west elevation, um, which is being changed to a nine, nine over nine, isn't really needed and it, it unnecessarily disturbs existing fabric. So we suggest the 12 over 12 remain in place. Um, similar concerns on the east side where a couple windows are just, one window is being moved, another is being moved over, changes to the fabric, which we'd rather not see happen. And um, typically the HTC requires evidence of a pre-existing roof walk before approving a new one on a house of this age. So those are our concerns. It's mostly in the back, um, pretty expansive addition and the proportions of that big south gable just don't feel like they fit on, you know, they're not normal proportions for a rear L for a house like this and pretty overwhelming. Okay. So that's, that's what we got. Well, when will this meeting record be uh, put together? Uh, so I'll have it available to review. I, my, my notes. Uh, we submit, yes, yes. We, we, um, I'll wrap this up in another hour right after a meeting. I'll send it out to the HTC. And unfortunately, I don't know that they make my comments, the RHSAB comments available to the general public. Which I don't know why they don't, but they should. But I can send them to you. Okay. Um, okay, that would be great. Yeah, uh, I think I probably have your email. Chris, what's your email just in case? It's, it's chris at design-associates.com. Good, thank you. Okay, so. Um, All right, um, do you guys, uh, you know, this is the first time I've ever been on with um, the Historic Structures Advisory Board. Uh, do you commonly want uh, applicants to uh, participate? Oh, always, but I, you know, I'm not surprised that you weren't here because it's, there's no, there's no like public identification or, or notification about that. Some people know enough to show up because they've been through it a lot. Yeah. Um, but you know, unfortunately, the HTC doesn't send out notices that we're meeting and discussing their projects. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mary, for um, uh, alerting me to this, and I'm sorry that I wasn't here at the outset to to take you through. Uh, some yeah, of I'm glad. I'm glad, Mary. You're did commenting that. on. Um, we will hopefully, Chris. This will go back to the HTC. They'll probably request some changes. I hope, and then we'll, we'll get another chance to look at it again, and then and then you you know we'll have another chance to to join us and talk more about it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. But yeah. Thank you for joining. Okay. Have a good week. Bye. Yep. See ya. All right. Um, that was the last one. So are we don't not doing Easy Street or Westover. Oh, good question. I could. I don't have. Could, could anybody find Easy Street? Oh, there it is. And Westover. What's? Oh. All right. No, they weren't on the agenda links. You're right. I've got those. Yeah, I don't. I didn't have any links to those, so I don't have um, Easy Street or Westover. So I, we really can't comment on those. Maybe they'll come up. Um, HTC is not meeting tomorrow night. They're going to meet Thursday for a short session. I think we'll have another chance to look at these before they see them anyway. Did you write a note on the thing for that we didn't get them? I will. Yeah. And also, please make a note about the application for the garage. 
for, for raised core garage. Good raised point. Core. Yeah, we'd like to see that. Maybe, um, yeah, she can correct that link. Yeah. Got it. All right. <clears throat> um, stop sharing. So I think I think that's that's it for today. Brooke, you're going to hang around for a little while. Um, yeah, I mean until June first. Okay. I mean I'll be right here. I'm not going to turn my screen off. So if you want to drop back in. <laughs> Wait till you have an application in front of us. Yeah, really. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's payback. <laughs> I'm really it. We're going to want to see it back and back and back. I have to say, Brooke, I, I appreciate your, your perspective. I think it brings from someone that's at the HTC a lot. Yeah. I know, Angus, you're there quite a bit too, but I just, you know, it helps to have, and I think it helps them knowing that you're here too. So. <laughs> uh, uh, pressure so uh we've got you for another three <laughs> at least three weeks oh yeah. oh ouch <laughs> yeah oh that's cold <laughs> just remember it keeps you young uh. all right well i'm gonna wrap it up um i think we can adjourn i don't think we need to take uh, motions for oh we do need to take a motion for um approving the minutes lucy yes brooke second seconded all those in favor yes Aye. i'm in and i'm in favor too so i'm just going to close it out thanks guys thank you yeah. bye we'll see you, see you guys <laughs>